Amazing love indeed. Will you please stand as you're able for this morning's scripture lesson from the Gospel of John. Select passages from chapter 11. We'll follow that with the singing of the Gloria found printed in your bulletin. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been, already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, said to them, unbind him and let him go. So Lazarus had been dead for four days. Four days. And then Jesus arrives, and everything changes. Everything certainly changed for Lazarus. Everything certainly changed for his family. All of a sudden, he's given a new opportunity. He's raised up from the grave. He gets a do-over, a second chance, a new beginning. How will he live? Will Lazarus take advantage of this wonderful opportunity? What would it be like? Here, I... I get a brand new chance. Well, friends, the truth is, all of us have the Lazarus opportunity right now. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Elsewhere, we're reminded he makes all things new. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, new life comes to us. A second chance comes to us. A third chance, if you need it, comes to us. A fourth, however many chances. New opportunities, new beginnings, new life. That's the Lazarus opportunity that we're given. In light of the new life that Christ brings us, will we live life differently? I, I, I can't imagine Lazarus not living life differently. Making the most of the opportunity. Will we do the same? I would think that it would influence every facet of our living. For example, this new life given in Jesus Christ, I think that it should influence the way you see. The way you see, surely Lazarus saw things entirely different given this new opportunity. If we're serious about living new life in Christ, I think we would begin to see life differently than the world presents it. We would see the presence of God all around us. Every day, we would see the blessings that surround us. Every day, we would know that God is with us and have that assurance in our heart that he strengthens us for the journey. I believe that we would see differently. John Gleeman tells a story. He was a Cub Scout leader. One day, the very first time, he decided to take his Cub Scout pack on a little hike, a trail near their home. Several miles, they took the day, and he came back and he, he just kept telling his wife how wonderful. That trail is so beautiful. I can't believe the things we saw. Some of the vistas up there were absolutely outstanding. His wife finally stopped him. He said, John, you jog that trail three or four times a week. You're acting like you saw it for the first time. And he said, well, 
Truth be told, most of the time I'm running the trail. This time I strolled along and walked with my Cub Scouts and I saw things that I had never seen before. Isn't that how it is in our life sometimes? We're rushing through life. We're running along the trail so rapidly that we fail to see what's around us. We miss the very things that God wants us to view because we're in such a hurry. New life in Jesus Christ says slow down a little bit. Open your eyes. You've been given a second chance. You've been given the Lazarus opportunity to live life rightly. So open your eyes. See that presence. Draw strength from that presence. View. See the view that God would have you see. That you might live as he would have you live. Secondly, I think that the Lazarus opportunity, this new life in Christ, should influence the way you walk. You know, friends, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to walk differently than what we see and sense in the world around us. Why? Because we've been set free. We've been forgiven. We know that burdens are lifted at Calvary. And I don't have to walk under the weight of that burden every single day. This comes to those who find their new life in Jesus Christ. Some years ago, I took a youth group on a, on a retreat. There were other youth groups present. And I remember one evening for the devotional, one of the youth leaders did something that I had never seen and I've never seen since. He did a little exercise with them for the devotional, and he called it the Lazarus Walk. And he had a young man from his group that he'd sort of coached for it, and they wrapped him in little thin strips of cloth. And so they wrapped this young person up, completely bound him, and so he demonstrated by kind of walking along, all bound up with those strips of cloth. And then this youth leader, he, he passed out some scissors. It wasn't a, a large group there, but he passed out scissors to every young person. And he said to him, now, you don't have to. And you certainly don't have to say anything out loud, but if you can think of something that every now and then really gets a hold on your heart that it shouldn't. In other words, if you're dealing with some anxiety, if you're dealing with fear, maybe you've lost someone and, and you're hurting or you've had your heart broken. Just as an acknowledgement that Christ can set us free from those, step forward with those scissors and clip a piece or two of that cloth off of this person. Now, I have to be honest with you. I thought to myself, There's, none of those kids are going to do that. But there was no giggling. There was total silence. And all of a sudden, a few of the kids stepped up and they took their scissors and they clipped those pieces of cloth. And the young man had been coached to kind of, whenever anybody clipped one, to kind of shake it off until there were enough kids that stepped up clipping it that he was free and he was able to walk around. It was a powerful moment. And you don't have to be a young person, young, old, or in between. You know what it is to be bound up with anxiety. You know what it is to be bound up with worry and distress. You know what it is to be bound up by grief and hurt and brokenness. And maybe if that person was standing right up here today, we would be the one to step up with the scissors and say, I need to be free from that. Well, Jesus told Lazarus when he came out, they, Jesus told them, unbind him and let him go. Get those grave cloths off of him. They don't belong there anymore because he's alive. Friends, it's the same for us. New life in Jesus Christ. Those things that are holding you captive and keeping you in the grave, those clothes don't belong there. Take the binding off. And walk freely. You know what it looks like. When you're carrying something that's too heavy. If you've ever tried to carry something that's too heavy. You're struggling along. Well I tell you friends. There are people today. Emotionally, psychologically and spiritually. You can't see it. But on the inside that's how they're walking. Because the burden's too heavy. And they weren't intended to have to bear that heavy burden by themselves. The Lazarus opportunity New life in Jesus Christ influences the way we walk because we can walk free. We can walk with the burden lifted. And we can walk with the assurance that Christ walks beside us. Third, 
I think this Lazarus opportunity, new life in Jesus Christ, would influence the way we hear, the way we hear. I'll bet Lazarus heard life at a deeper level. As followers of Jesus Christ, when we experience that new life, we're able to listen to life at a deeper level. That is, through prayer, through worship, through communion with God, we listen deeply for the nudging of God's Spirit and the assurance of His directing and guiding voice in our life. And friends, you have to listen very deeply to sense that. I'm sure Lazarus could hear differently. You know, some years ago I was visiting a gentleman who's in one of my churches and he had faced a very serious surgery. In fact, the surgery was so serious at one point they didn't know that he was gonna, whether he would make it through or not. But he did. And he got on the other side of that and I was visiting with him and, you know, in the course of the, of the visit, you know, how are you doing? And he was this kind of guy, so you have to kind of understand. He was this kind of guy. He looked at me and he said, Preacher, my hearing is better than it's ever been. I said, your hearing? Wait a, wait a second. Your surgery had nothing to do with your ear. And he looked at me again. He says, I'm just telling you, my hearing is better than it's ever been. He was that kind. He, it's the way he talked. He was, I knew what he was saying. He was listening to life at a deeper level. That he could sense the direction of God's spirit and presence in his life. And friends, the second chance, the new beginnings, the new life, the Lazarus opportunity that comes to us is like that. If we allow God to move into our hearts and lives and operate, operate in our very being, then we will be able to hear differently and listen to God amidst our lives. Finally, I think this Lazarus opportunity, this new life in Jesus Christ should definitely influence the way you talk. The way you talk. Friends, we've said it many times over the past many months, but the level of toxicity that invades people's speech today in our culture, it always, always amazes me. It's about as toxic and poisonous as you've ever heard in a generation. But as followers of Jesus Christ, we're called to talk differently. Our talk is to be seasoned with salt and graciousness. Our talk is to be that of compassion and kindness. Not that that we see exemplified in our world today. I, I don't know about you. I, I have a feeling several of you may have had this experience, but I kind of tell, tell them myself, I guess. But I can remember as a, as a young teen sort of picking up a few words from my buddies and then maybe getting mad at my brother and decided that that word was one I would spit out there. And my parents calling me aside and saying, we don't talk like that here. We don't talk like that in this household. Friends, as followers of Jesus Christ, no matter what we hear, the speech out in our world today, we don't talk like that in God's household. We talk differently because we know the new life that comes in Jesus Christ. Devotional writer Betty Talkington, she writes a story. It says one evening, she, one night, she had a dream. And, you know, dreams and wasn't a real frequent occurrence in her life. And she even says, I don't even know why this dream, why it made its way into my subconscious. But her dream was she was in heaven, she said. And she encountered a young man that she'd gone to high school with many years before. How he made his way into her subconscious, I have no idea. But he was a young man that everyone made fun of in their high school class. And she said, there they were, and she recognized him. And he said, he looked at her and said, I needed your voice. Why were you silent? She said she woke up and she was sweating. It was one of those dreams that just seemed real, and she was thankful that it was only a dream. <laughs> You've had those. But it got her attention, and to be honest with you, in reading it, it got my attention. 
Because, you know, every week, every week we talk about Matthew 25. When you do it to the least of these, we reach out to the least, the last, the lonely, the left out. Those that have been marginalized, those that have been made fun of, those that are picked on for the way that they are. And God forbid that someday we encounter those people and they say, I needed your voice. Why were you silent? Church, I needed your voice. Why were you silent? Friends, this new opportunity to live life differently, it should influence the way we talk. So Lazarus, <laughs> brand new beginning, out of the grave. The grave, the stone is rolled away, the grave cloths are off. Here we go, Lazarus, brand new life. Same for you and I, friends. Because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we are raised up out of the grave to live a new life now. For him. May it impact the way you see, the way you walk, the way you hear, and the way you talk. Let us pray. Lord God, so many times we give lip service to the new life that you've offered and then go on and live life however we want, rather than allowing you to truly impact our decisions, our words our attitudes, our daily walk. Forgive us and create within us new hearts and right spirits that we might live in light of the new life that comes to us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.